Okay, we're going to do a few studies on Paul's teachings that many churches misunderstand. I don't even say misunderstand. They, they take the verse out of context and they build a whole teaching. But Peter warned us about Paul's teachings that we got to be careful. Let's go to 2 Peter 3.15. It's really 16 I want to focus on, but we'll get the context in 15. He said this about Paul's writings. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given him, given unto him, has written unto you. Now look, look what he said about Paul's writings in verse 16. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to understand. So here Peter is saying that there's some things that Paul is writing that's very difficult to understand. But let's keep reading. Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist. So he's saying, look, he's saying to us so hard that, pe that there are some people that unlearn they don't know anything about the old testament the context what the old covenant and new covenant about they they're unlearned and they're unstable that means they have an agenda they go to the word with their agenda and then poof they come out with a teaching and if you look at paul's writing it would at first glance say what they're saying so that's a come peter is warning us that there are let me read it again verse 16 as also in all, all his epistles, not even like one or two, all of them, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand. So look, if, if you don't understand the gospels first, don't go rushing to Paul trying to get doctrine because his is like PhD levels type of stuff. Why don't you go to grammar school, you know, um, um, preschool first before you go to, to the collegiate level. But he said they're hard to understand. But this is a problem, which they that are unlearned, they don't know nothing, they don't understand, like I said, the other doctrines, they're unlearned and unstable, meaning you could tell by their lives. You know, when you see an unstable person, I remember watching a video yesterday of a, of a guy that was just shooting in the highway, and then when the cops finally surrounded him, he, he came at them charging. He didn't have any gun. And the people are like, the officer's like, oh, he doesn't have a gun. But as he's charging them, he does like a backflip and he, he jumps at them and then he gets arrested. The, that's unstable. That guy was unstable. You know, here, Paul, Peter is saying that there's some that will take Paul's writing who are unstable. You could tell by their lives. Usually, honestly, I believe th that what, they, what you believe eventually comes out and manifests in what you do. So it's really that doctrine. But these people, they're unstable. They have unstable lives. They're, they're hypocritical. They're, they're still in bondage to sin. They're contradictory. These people are unstable. So these people that, that are unlearned and unstable twist as they do also other scriptures for their own destruction. So look. From now on, when we read Paul's letter, it should be like the cigarette boxes, you know, where it says Surgeon General's Warning. That's how, that's how it should be when we go to Paul's writings. We shouldn't be like, oh, like today. Let's go. Actually, let's go there. Romans, Romans chapter 7. I'm going to tell you what many churches, especially the churches in America do. And it's wicked because they take this verse totally out of context, out of the whole chapter before and the whole chapter after. And then they build a whole doctrine. And like I said, at first glance, you could easily come to that conclusion. Let's go to Romans 24. Romans 7, 24. It says this. This is Paul speaking. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now let's go to the next verse in chapter 8. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. And then they stop there. Say, ha ha, praise God. See, oh, what a wretched man that I am. I'm such a dirt bag. Oh, what a wretched man that I am. Who's going to deliver me from this body of death? I just, you know, I, I keep wanting to sin. 
But Paul said this, you know, he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with my mind, I myself serve the law of God. So in my mind, I want to do what God tells me to do. I really, really do. I know what he wants me to do. I really want to do it in my mind. But with the flesh, the law of sin. So in my mind, yes, I want to please God. I want to do it. But I have another law in my body and I sin all the time and I can't help it. I got to watch pornography. I got to get high. I got to um, lust after women. I, I, I got to be angry all the time. I, it's just the law of sin. So yeah, I understand in the law of God, it's in my mind, but in my flesh, I, I, I just can't help myself. I, I just got to sin. And look, it says the next verse, Romans 8, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So I could be watching my pornography and it's okay. There's no condemnation because I, I pay lip service in my mind. I do really want to serve God, but I'm serving my body, my flesh. So it's okay because there's no condemnation. Praise God. I could be a hypocrite and make it to the kingdom. That is what they teach in churches. And like I said, if you take those three verses, you could come to that conclusion easily. If you're unlearned and if you're unstable, you could come to that conclusion. And, and sad to say, that's what the majority of churches teach out there because it's a sin accommodating doctrine. It lets religious hypocrites that don't want to change, who don't want to repent, stay in church and be like, oh, it's okay, because in my mind, I, I, I really don't want to serve God. I'm here in church. I mean, later on, I'm going to go sleep with my, my boyfriend or girlfriend, but at least I'm here because see, there's evidence I want to serve God, but I'm serving the flesh. But it's okay. There's no condemnation. Doctrine of devil. Paul warned, Peter warned, that Paul's teachings are hard to understand and that them that are Unlearned and unstable twist. That's why there should be a surgeon general's warning on Paul's writings. You cannot just come up like that on Paul's letters. You, that's horrible. What, what you're teaching is, is doctrines of demons. Teaching of demons. You're, let, you're letting the people of God think that it's okay to sin and they're still going to make it to the kingdom. That's what they're teaching. Let's look at the context of this, this chapter before and after. I'm not going to, I, me, I would go all the way to Romans 1, but for, for today's sake, let's just start in verse um, 7, Romans 7, verse 7. Oh, wait, and look, I, I have a video of um, somebody quoting that verse the way normal American Christian Christians um, quote it. This guy, he's rebuking another man because he's in an adulterous marriage and, and the guy's not answering his questions. So finally, in the back, you hear the lady quoting Romans 8 verse 1. But look look how she uh, misquotes it, mishandles the word of God. Did you hear that? She's playing a little tambourine while her, her pastor or her... Um, you know, co-laborer is getting rebuked and she says, there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Yeah, he's in a adulterous marriage, it appears, but it's okay. There's no condemnation. What? That's how they, that's how they um, twist the word of God. That's how, that's what Peter warned about. But let's, we're going to get the right interpretation because the Bible says that this word is not for personal interpretation you you cannot have your belief your teaching your teaching and say oh it's all biblical there's only one teaching coming out of the Bible I keep calling it an adulterous marriage it's not a yes marriage. no it's not so, it's thank you it's not an adulterous marriage there's no such thing as adulterous marriage it's like there's no such thing as a homosexual marriage it's all adultery an it's all homosexuality there's not a marriage but let's let's continue Romans 7 verse 7 now I'm going to tell you the right interpretation. Not this doctrines of demons. What shall I say then? Is the law sin? Now he, before he's talking about the law of Moses and, and the reason why God gave us a law, it was to expose the sin in us. Is the law sin? God forbid. No, I have, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I, for I had not known lust, 
except the law said, thou shalt not covet. So in other words, the law shows us, oh, what I'm doing is wrong. Oh, wait a minute. I just took this um, person's iPhone. Oh, wait a minute. God's law says that's stealing. Oops, I messed up. That was the purpose of the law, to show you that what you're doing is wrong. Verse 8, but sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. What's that word? Covetness. Covetness. So, so sin that's in his body. We Look, we all have a body and we all have sin. No, we all have a body and we have the potential to sin. So when the law came out, according to Paul, instead of saying, I better not do it. You know what the law did? It, in, in his body, it said, oh, I got to do it now. I want to steal. I want to lie. I want to I wanna commit adultery. I want to dishonor my mother and father. That's what he's saying here. Plain reading. Let me read it again. In verse 8, but sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. So before the law, before it was shown to him that it was, it was um, a sin, he, he didn't know it was sin. Oh, he didn't even know at all. And honestly, I'll be real. In my life, a lot of things that, that I got caught up under was things I never knew until somebody showed me. Then all of a sudden I was like, wow, wow, look at this. Oh, look at pornography. Oh, look at, look at these women. Oh, this way you go to, to this club and they're like dressed half naked or completely naked. It was somebody who introduced me to it. They might not even have introduced it to me. Like we talk to people. The Bible says, exactly. We got to be careful that we don't talk about things and then you introduce it to them. And you're not even trying to introduce it. You just brought it up because now you you opened their eyes to it. And here, Paul is saying that the law was that way to him too. That he didn't know it. But once he knew it, all of a sudden, his body wanted to do it. His flesh. But let's continue reading. Verse 9. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. So here he's saying that there was a time that... Let me read again. For I, he was alive without the law, meaning he didn't know. But when the commandment came, then he realized he broke it. And now he's, he died in the sense that now he knows he's subject to God's anger. So, but before the command came, he was like doing stuff he didn't even know was wrong. But once it came, he was like, oops, now I'm in trouble. Now, a lot of people want to go deep in this. I would like to go deep in this, but for the sake of today's message, I'm not going to go deep. Because the thing is, when was Paul alive and then he died? Some would say that as a toddler, you know, the Bible says that little children don't know, don't know their right hand from their left and that God has made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. So some would teach that children are born innocent, but as they grow and, and they get understanding that's when they sin yo but that but i'll leave it like that verse 10 and the commandment which was ordained to life i found to be unto death so the command is good he's going to tell us later the command is good but the command that was meant for good killed him because he realized oops i've done it but let me stop here for a second. I want you to notice in the next few verses that the Holy Spirit is not talked here because this is very important. Because if you don't understand that this, what Paul is talking about is his life before he had an encounter with the Lord and before he's walking in the Spirit. He's walking, he's a, a man that's trying to do the right thing, but his body is like betraying him because his body wants to do the wrong thing. But the Spirit in this, this chapter, chapter 7, the spirit is not there yet. That's the thing you have to understand. Because if you don't understand that, you're going to misunderstand. You're going to walk out saying, yeah, I, I could be a hypocrite and God's going to send me to heaven. No, he's saying this is the life of a, because he, he was a religious man. He's, he's, he's describing his life as a religious hypocrite. And honestly, if we don't walk in the spirit, we could easily fall into the life too. But let's keep reading. 10, 10 and the command no I, I read that 11 verse 11 for sin taken occasion by the command deceived me and by it slew me so he's saying the command was good but 
it deceived him and now he's dead. He knows he's in trouble with God because he sinned. Let's keep reading. 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment is holy and just and good. So there's nothing wrong with the commandments of God. Verse 13. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. In other words, did God make something good to kill me? No, that's not the reason why God gave us the law. But sin, that it might be might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by commandment might become exceedingly sinful. So in other words, the command exposes, this book exposes that you're in trouble with God. That's the point of the law. You know, the, the main point of the law was to show you that you're in trouble with God and that you need a savior. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So he acknowledges, look, God's, God's laws are spiritual, but he himself, especially in his flesh, is carnal. Right, that he knows he he's you know he can't get right in his body. He wants to get right, but he for some reason he can't get right. Verse fifteen. For that which I okay now this this is this is another verse they go to that they isolate. For that which I do I allow not for for what I would that I do not, but what I hate that I do. So they say, see that's my life. I want to do the right thing, but I do the wrong thing. The thing I hate, I do it. But they don't understand the whole context. Paul is talking about his life before he came to, to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and before he had the spirit of God. That was a, that's a, that's a, um, the mindset of someone who does not truly understand God, who, would, who, who, was not, who was not walking in the spirit. So in their, their mind, they hate. They know it's wrong. They hate it, but they do it anyway. And that was that's how Paul was for most of his life, where he wanted to do the right thing, but he did the thing that he hated. Let's keep reading. 16. If then, if then I do that which is, okay. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. So in other words, if his conscience is telling him, look, what I'm doing is wrong, he's acknowledging that this is right. You know, if he's stealing something he's, and he knows it's my, I, what I'm doing is wrong, he's acknowledging that God, what God said, that thou, thou shalt not steal is right. Verse um, 17, you got to help me out with the verses here. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. All right. So Paul is saying, look, the reason why I do wrong things is not in his in his um spirit. Is really, it's not really him. It's 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 the flesh. It's his body that wants to do it. So in his mind, he's having like a struggle. You know, you ever see those um, um cartoons where you see like a good angel and a bad angel? That, that's how it's going in his, in his soul where he knows it's wrong. It, it reminds me of a drug addict that's trying to recover and they know it's wrong, but they go anyway to get that hit. I'm not talking about all because there's some that love to get high. I'm talking about those that are going to like a recovery center and they, they, want, they don't want to go there, but their body is craving the drug and they go anyway. And, and, and it is with sin with us. You know, theirs is drugs. I could just be pornography, adultery, fornication, drunkenness, um, homosexuality. It could be those things where you know what God said and you know it's right, but something in you keeps wanting to go back. That's the struggle that Paul is having. 18. For verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that good, I find not. So in other words, he wants to do the right thing. He knows, he knows in his body, there's nothing good in him. Uh, let, let me stop here for a second. This might um, be off topic, but it's not. In the NIV Bible, the word flesh, they translated sinful nature. All right. In the Greek, the Greek word for flesh is sarkai. It's always translated sarkai. 
There's no such thing as a sinful nature. That's the interpreters of the NIV inserting their philosophy, their worldview into the Bible. So when somebody picks up the NIV Bible, they say, oh, sinful nature. I got a sinful nature. No, the word is flesh. We got to make sure that the word that God used is a word that the translators use. You, you cannot impose your doctrine into to the word of God. But second, is, let me, what verse are we on? Verse 18? Uh, 19. No, but let me go back to 18. Okay. For, I, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. So in other words, he wants to do it. But how to perform that good, I find not. Notice, he didn't mention anything about the spirit. It's the spirit that gives you power to overcome. But we'll get, that, we'll get to that when we get to chapter 8. Verse 19, for the good that I would, would I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. So he's being like a hypocrite. You know, he's living a hypocritical life. Verse 20, now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. All right? Look, everybody has got to acknowledge that as long as you live, you're going to have this body. And this body is going to, he's going to talk about it next. He's, it's going to war with your mind. So to say to somebody, say, oh, I, I, I'm free from sin and, and, you know, my body and all that. This body's always going to fight you to the day you die. As long as you, as long as you're in this earth. Verse 20 for, I read that already, right? No, 21. I find then a law that when I do, when I do, Okay, let me read again. Verse 21. I find then a law that when I do good, evil is present with me. So he acknowledges there's a, something in him that wants to do the bad. He wants to do good, but there's something in him that says, let's do the bad. Verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So in his, in, in his mind, he loves the word of God. He loves what God says. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, in his body, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the, to the law of sin, which is in my members. So he sees another law in his body and is fighting, is warring against the law of his mind and then is bringing him into captivity. In other words, he goes into that sin. He doesn't want to go into drugs. But he goes into it. He doesn't want to go into pornography or homosexuality or um, idolatry. But they go back. And, 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 and it's struggling. You know, he wants to do his war. It's a war. Let me tell you, there's a war going inside of you. Oh, and then he said this in verse 24 about himself. Oh, wretched man that I am. Now, some people say, see right there. He's talking about him right now. But the thing is, that could be us too. If we don't walk in the spirit. I'm going to get to that. But he said this in verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, I serve, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. All right. So he's saying this is how he is without the spirit. Let's read the next verse that people like to quote. They always stop halfway through for some reason. We're going to read the whole verse. Chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There is the difference. Before chapter 8, Paul is struggling in his body and mind. He wants to do what's right, but he does the evil, and the evil he hates, he does it. And there's a war. But now... There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. See, when, when we have the Spirit of God, which we receive after baptism, according to um, Acts 2.38, that's what comes important, you get baptized. Now, you can, let's keep reading. Verse 2. Now, listen to this. This is very important. For, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the, the law of sin and death. So the Spirit sets you free from that little back and forth war. 
It sets you free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, for, for what the law could not do. So the law wanted to do this. The law, the law of Moses, especially the Ten Commandments and the law of Moses. The law wanted you to, to live in freeness. Verse 3, let me read again. For that, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, because of the flesh, you can never do the law of Moses. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk again who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit of God so when Jesus was crucified he condemned sin and now that little battle was set free for those that walk after the spirit not after the flesh so what does it mean to walk after the spirit that means we're always in communion with god we're always feeding our soul with spiritual things if you're doing that you'll overcome the flesh but the minute you say i'm not going to walk in the spirit now you're walking in the flesh then you're going to have that little back and forth struggle but christ jesus came to condemn sin and 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 free us from that and when we have the spirit, now we, we're not in that little, the law of sin and death anymore. We're under the law of Christ. We're under the spirit now. What verse am I am now? So, question. Go ahead. When you're doing, when you're baptizing yourself, is it like supposedly killing your old body, meaning getting rid of the sin and cleaning yourself and making yourself pure? I'll talk about that later. Okay. Okay, but good question. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Oh, verse six. Right? No, verse 5. Let me read verse, re, re, verse 5. We'll stop in verse 6. For they that are, look, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay? So if you're walking in the flesh, it's going to lead to death. And I'm not talking about just physical death because we're all going to die. I'm talking about eternal death. But if you walk in the spirit, there is life. You know, it, it, it's a beautiful thing when a drug addict gets out of drugs. They're not, you know, trying to steal, murder people to get money, to get high anymore. They're not staying up at, at three in the morning. You know, their skin is not falling, falling apart. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you're set free from that sin and there's peace. Because that little war you had it in your mind, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Praise, praise God for that. But that's if you walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. So I'm going to stop there for today. But I just wanted to, to debunk this lie that many churches use. And honestly, that's why they never go to the teachings of Jesus in the, in the Gospels. They'll never go to the Beatitudes and break it down. Because the Beatitudes destroy their doctrine. Because the Beatitudes, Jesus said, if your right eye causes, causes you to sin, to pluck it out, it's better for you to lose an eye than for your whole body to be thrown in hell. But their false doctrine teaches, well, I can't help myself. The evil want to do, I do. So, But thank God, there's no condemnation. They'll never call Jesus. They'll never go to the Gospels because they'll contradict their, their teachings. But when you rightly divide, rightly divide the word of God, when you read the whole thing in context and you realize Reve um, Romans 7 is talking about Paul trying to do the right thing, but there's an internal struggle. But then chapter 8 is when he's walking in the spirit and not in the flesh. And now he has victory in Christ Jesus. Then it makes sense. But if you, like I said, surgeon general warnings on Paul's teachings. If you take those three verses, yeah, you could come out with that false doctrine, but it's leading a lot of Christians into one bondage here because they're going to be in their sin. There's just going to be religious hypocrites going to church thinking, oh, well, at least I'm in church. Yeah, I'm going I'm to you know, get high later on, but it's okay. They, even And even worse, the Bible says that no unclean thing, no filthy will enter the kingdom of God. God came here. Jesus Christ not only came to... Um, die for our sins. He came to deliver us from the bondage, to free us. But I tell you this, if you have the false doctrine, if you believe what, what those people teach, you're never going to be free. Because you're always going to have your mind, well, you know, this is who I am. There's, you know, I've got to be like this for the rest of my life. 
and you don't understand that there's victory in the spirit through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.